Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for your testimony. Um, this issue of funding, I think, is central because Mr. Pitt expressed a concern I have is that we will give responsibility to SEC and not the resources to get them done, and and it goes to the CFTC also. And and so I was a strong proponent of self-funding, even though I'm also an appropriator. I, I presume, Mr. Pitt, that ultimately you would be supportive of, of some type of self-funding mechanism? Yes, I um, uh, believe that there are uh, a number of financial regulators that have the ability to self-fund, and the SEC should not be a stepchild. I think the concerns that have been expressed about accountability um, make it imperative that if self-funding is granted, and I believe it should be, that there be complete accountability before the appropriate committees, this committee and others, so that you can assess where the SEC proposes to spend its money. But you would wind up saving taxpayers um, a billion plus dollars if the money did not come out of the Treasury as it presently does. Thank you, Mr. Pitt. Uh, the, the back and forth has revealed so the issue of accountability as well as funding, and, and there are ways for accountability. One is this committee. Um, in fact, probably a more effective way if used correctly than the Appropriations Committee. Uh, but also there's the issue of regulatory capture. And as you point out, every other, prior, prior, except for CFTC, regulatory agency, financial agency is self-funded. But there's still the issue of regulatory capture. But I think that has, has to be resolved probably in other forums. I don't see anyone here, if someone would like to put their hand up and say if the Fed should be subject to the appropriation process, do you have any takers? Barbara? No, not even the Consumer Federation of America. So I think this issue of, <laughs> I think this issue of sort of, well, if they don't have appropriate oversight by the appropriators, they just won't be accountable to the American people, defies <laughs> the financial system we have in place today. Uh, and Ms. Simpson, you talked about majority voting, and I think it, it, I, I just want to clarify, because the proposal that we had in the legislation, I think, is essential to it, f fell out, unfortunately. That would have required a director to receive the majority of the votes cast. Today, uh, a director could be elected to a board with 10 percent of the of votes or one vote if no one decides to cast votes. So that's, that happens sometimes, at least of anomalies. So effectively, without this majority, Without the ability to nominate directors, and then without the ability to insist they at least get a majority of vote, uh, the leverage of shareholders is diminished. Now, we've made some improvements, but you would suggest we, we should go further in terms of a majority vote. Is that correct? Uh, yes, thank you. And um, the situation you describe is not that uncommon. We, we sort of had a look back last year. Um, just in the Russell 3000, there's over 100 directors who didn't win a majority of the vote and who are still just quietly sitting on the board. Um, so far this year, another 36. So this is an environment uh, w which is really very troubling. Um, you know, this may be democracy, <laughs> but it's of a very peculiar sort mm -hmm. if you don't have to win the election in order to keep yourself right. in place. And of course, the, the comment that's made about special interests with, I have to say, with great respect, to be rather like a politician saying we shouldn't trust the electorate with something as important as the vote. But let me, um, let me so. follow up on that sort of line of criticism that, well, this, the, this creates this lack of transparency because you might have big voting blocks doing things. Essentially, um, whatever benefit you gain is mm -hmm. equally shared by every other shareholder. Is that... Yes, that's absolutely right. And two points on that. First, um, CalPERS, uh, being a great champion of transparency, thinks that has to apply to us as well. We put all of our votes on our website. Our policies are there for you to see. Um, and I think that's very important. And I'd encourage all investors to follow the same approach. Um, the, the other issue about the financial benefit is really important. So even though CalPERS is so big, typically we'll hold about half a percent of a company. Um, and if we want to do anything, uh, first of all, we have to collaborate with others. And secondly, you're quite right, the, the benefit is shared. So we had a report done for our board just before 
uh, the end of last year, looking at 10 years of our investor engagement to see what had happened at those companies. And sure enough, you went from a situation where that group of companies went from underperforming to producing uh, excess returns. And of course, that's not just going to help CalPERS, it's going to help every other shareholder. So there's a net, net gain in the market. I think one of the uh, dilemmas or, or sort of contradictions is that the presumption, of course, is that corporations are run for the benefit of shareholders. But I think particularly when you looked at the, the companies that failed, mm -hmm. Lehman Brothers, mm -hmm. Bear Stand, uh, they weren't being run for the benefit of, of shareholders at all. They were being run for the benefit of the management with huge rewards to management. In fact, as I sort of look back, it was a public ownership model and a private compensation model, and it worked very well until uh, you know, the, the tide turned. And uh, in many respects, shareholders are the least powerful people in, a, in, in corporations, and they are, according to corporate law, and I'll defer to Mr. Pitt and others, they are the ultimate owners. They're the ones which every director has a fiduciary duty to, and manager has a fiduciary duty to, but it appears from what's happened in the lead up to this collapse that the shareholders were sort of the last people are being considered. Is that your view as a... Yes, I, 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 I do agree with you. You know, we're the one-armed paper hanger. Um, we, you know, we need to have the tools to hold boards accountable. Um, and I think what you'll find, uh, my conclusion is that if shareholders have votes that don't really matter uh, and they don't have the ability to intervene in an effective way, um, they think, okay, the system is designed. Either you can sell or you can sue. Now, that's not going to work for CalPERS because we're too big and we're too long term. But we really do need the tools to be able to behave like owners. And that's why, uh, and I know it's been said, well, we could go, uh, uh, Mr. Pitt has said we should go uh, door to door with companies in different states, filing resolutions to have amendments. But to be honest, we see this as a market fundamental. Um, if capitalism can't turn to the owners to hold companies accountable, then we shouldn't be surprised when we have the problems that we do. Thank you very much.